Okay, there that goes. Okay, here we go. Let me try it one more time. Here we go. Agent Uprising show number 269 with Michael Good, owner of Sound Music School. I'm your host, Kevin Miller, broadcasting from the Free Agent headquarters high up in the Rocky Mountains. Find us at freeagentuprising.com. Okay, folks, Michael is founder of Soundboard Music School, a school that offers private music instruction outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Two years ago, he quit his job to work in this new venture with only one student. Today, the school has grown to 40 students and he has two other teachers work for him. So, Uprising, we're going to hear how Michael made his first dollar and then the few after that and so on. All right, Michael, uh, first off, tell everybody exactly who you are. Yeah, absolutely, Kevin. So, uh, well, first of all, you know, thanks for having me on here. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to, to chat with you this morning. I am, uh, to give you a little bit of uh, perspective, I'm 33 years old, been happily married for 10 years now, and have uh, a wonderful two-year-old son and a second one uh, on the way in about two months. This one's going to be a girl, and we're, we're really excited about it, and uh, so I, you know, I, feel, I feel blessed, absolutely. Well, and I gotta, I gotta say, I'm uh, follow you guys. Actually, I don't even know if you're, if I'm following you. I think I am on Instagram, but I see your wife Claudia. I see her stuff. Uh, great pictures. She, um, you know, it's incredible pictures of you guys, your life, your kiddo, and uh, it's such a gift uh, to watch. And I also got to tell people, I was just looking at some stuff, and it was September of 2011 that you came to a Free Agent Academy event. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. That was. You know, you. Uh, we'll probably get into this, Kevin. But you know, what you're doing there with Free Agent Academy has been a big part of you know not only what I'm doing today, but just you know who I who I've become through through all this free agent or through all this you know free agent stuff, all this business stuff, and all of that. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. You know, that was a pivotal time. Met you out there in Colorado. Met a lot of other people who I still am in contact with today. They're out. You know, it was a small group of 20 or 30 of us. And, uh, Oh, that was a great time. Absolutely, I was I was honored to uh, to walk with you uh, then and be able to be a, a little part of your journey now, uh, which is just impressive. Um, so hey, let's dive in, and I want uh, you to let people know what were you doing before this launch. You said you left your job, so tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So I was managing a small music shop. A, I was. Kind of running the show there it was a small music shop in downtown Philadelphia where we specialized in classical guitars, nylon string classical guitars from all over the world. A lot of real high end stuff. So kind of a niche shop, and uh, the owner there was semi retired. So I was kind of running the show. He was only there a couple days a week, so it was just me and you know a handful of teachers doing lessons. That's what I was doing. I was doing that for about five or six years. Wow. Okay. So five to six years. So in the music arena. So what then? Where did the spark come to think I could go out and do something on my own? One. Why? You know. Where did that spark come for going out on your own, taking that for a student, or were you doing that alongside it? And give us the journey there. Yeah. Well, you know, growing up, I never thought about starting my own business. Never really thought about doing anything on my own. Um, so here I was running this sh shop, managing it there, and it wasn't until a good friend of mine, uh, kind of out of the blue, said, hey, you know, you should buy the store. Because at the time, the owner was looking to, to sell it, was starting to think about, you know, retiring full time. And I was like, well, you know, that's, you know, I don't know. What, I don't know. What do I know about running a, running a business? So that that kind of you know created the spark for me and i kind of dismissed it initially but then over time a number of a couple of years i started pursuing that you know, to buy the store and ultimately didn't go that direction but that was that initial sort of thought in my head which got me going in that direction well so you say that you had never you grew up you never had the idea initially uh, of going the self employment route 
that put the spark in, so the idea in. So right there, then, how did you view yourself in regards to that? Who am I to go pursue self-employment, do something different did than than the norm? How did that manifest itself? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. So I mentioned what you're doing there was a big part of me making the leap. And I remember your questionnaire when I joined pre agent Academy years ago. Uh, there was a question on there, sort of, what is one of your biggest uh, maybe fears or beliefs that you know make you think that you might not be able to do this? And mine was, you know, it feels like it's just a pipe dream. You know, that for people who are doing it, it's it's fine for them, but you know, for me, like I'd never be able to actually do something on my own and actually be able to do it. Um, so it was really that community that I got to know, you know, through FAA and through other people um, that I started connecting with. It kind of branched out from there. But, you know, two people that were really influential, as, you know, that I got to know, you know, friends of yours were Andy Traub at TakePermission.com and uh, Justin Lucas Savage at CoachRadio.com. So two, two guys, you know, who are friends of mine now and... They were just a year or two ahead of me in the process, and so I always drew inspiration from them, listened to their podcasts and whatnot, and big influence on, on me so continuing. Those two, guys, those two guys specifically, so kind of coming together with them, are you saying that was a big part of bolstering of your own faith and confidence in doing something on your own? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It was like seeing people who I could relate to you know that they, they weren't ultra successful at that point. You know, they had just started their businesses a few years ago, and they had you know some great success, and we're doing it, and we're doing it full time, and all this stuff. But you know, it wasn't like you know looking at people making a half a million dollars a year or whatever. Uh, you know, it was people who I could relate to, and people who were real, and people who I got to know personally. That that was a big inspiration for me. That's excellent. Okay, so as you're looking at this, so you've got the job, you've been doing it for a long time, and in stepping out for this free agent pursuit, what was your primary, you know, why? Why did you want to do that as opposed to stay in the job field, which is the norm of our culture? What was the core driving motive? Sure. For, for me, I think it just seemed like, honestly, it seemed like a lot of fun <laughs> and uh, somewhat naive. You know, now it's, it's sure it's fun, but it's, you know, it's a heck of a lot of work too. My goodness, uh, lots of ups and downs. But I didn't have like the career track. I didn't have the corporate job. I went to school for music, music education. And after school, I realized, you know, I started teaching in some schools as a you know general music teacher, and I was like, ah, oh, you know, I, I hate this. I, I don't like teaching in a school like this. So I didn't have this career track that I was on. And you know, after that, my my good friend put the idea like, hey, you know, you should you should buy the store. So then I had this sort of in the back of my head saying, you know, hey, you know, I could maybe I could start my own business, do something. So it was sort of this thing that I started learning more about and, you know, connecting with other people who were doing it and started to dream more about and that, it was really kind of, kind of all I wanted to do at that point. And at that time, were you already married? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I've been fully self-employed for two and a half years or so now. I've been married for ten years. So, you know, okay. So at the time, you know, I had I was in school initially when we got married, you know, still in school and then just kind of working some different jobs, that sort of thing. So I was married and actually uh, when I first started the business, quit the job, you know, a baby was on the way. Uh, I ended up quitting my job like three months after we had our first child. Okay. So you mentioned you were teaching in school, didn't like that. Was it uh, well, because I, I would assume that now that you've got a a teaching business, that it wasn't the teaching that you didn't like. Was it just the structure of school? Yeah, exactly. I, I think the structure of school and what what we do now is private lessons, private music lessons. So it's very different than you know going to a high school and you know from seven to three or whatever it is, eight to five. It's it's very different. It's much more flexible. 
the actual teaching is much different too. It's it's more one on one, and we do some classes too, but it's much more one on one. You're not, you know, managing a, a classroom of you know twenty fourth graders or twenty sixth graders. You know, that's it's it's all together a different different uh, ball game. Okay, so here you are. You told us a story. The idea of buying the music biz, uh, the music store that you were in is what sparked this idea. You had done some teaching, so where did you finally come to, okay, what am I going to do? Here's this idea of teaching music. This is what I'm going to jump after. How did that happen? Yeah, it, it was kind of interesting how it took place. So we had our first child on the way. I still didn't know what I was going to do, but we knew that, my wife and I knew that we wanted her to primarily stay home and raise our family, raise the children. So my income at the time, she was working full time and my income wasn't going to be enough to, to pay the bills. So we needed to figure something out, we needed to do something different. At the time we knew we didn't want to pursue buying that music shop anymore, so we're like, alright, what am I going to do? Um, I didn't know, but I, I knew I had to do something. So I decided, along with my wife, she was very supportive and actually was the one kind of nudging me along to do something different. Uh, she, we decided at the end of the year, it was about four months out, at the end of the year we were saying, okay, I'm going to quit my job, I don't know what I'm going to do, but come the end of the year, four months from now, I'm, I'm quitting my job, I'm going to have something figured out by then. And it wasn't until after I kind of drew that line in the sand, I, you know, I remember making that decision very clearly that I started really thinking of different ideas, started you know, thinking, well, what could I do? I, I thought about different jobs I could do, uh, different maybe positions I could do. I remember talking to Justin, who we mentioned earlier, you know, like, ah, you know, what, what the heck am I going to do here? Um, it wasn't until then I was like, okay, well, what could I do on my own? And then I started thinking of different things along where my experience is and where my expertise is, and that's when I came up with the idea of what I'm doing today. And that was something, so you talked with Claudia, she agreed, and you said, okay, this is it. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my stand, make a commitment on this business idea. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we didn't have a choice. We didn't have a choice because I had to do something. I couldn't stay where I was. And, you know, I think that's, that's why some people get stuck for a long time. They're not forced to, make, to do something different. I was forced. You know, I was forced to do something I, did, I had to do. We had like $3,000 in the bank. Uh, a three-month-old child, and I had, like I mentioned earlier, one student, you know, making like 150 bucks a month. I quit my job, and I was like, all right, I, I had, you know, three thousand dollars in the bank. Rather than slowly bleeding and like keeping my job, but like taking from, you know, the three thousand dollars and putting stuff on credit cards, like, all right, I'm jumping. We're gonna figure it out and do this full time. Rather than slowly bleeding, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go for it. I mean, it's it's that's a hard. I mean, so you had to because if she's going to have the baby, stop her full her her income. Your income doesn't support us, so you've got to do something. Now you could have you know brainstorming. You could have added you know on the side or or taken a second job or looked at a a different full time job that would pay more. And you decided to go this route. So you put those things together. Now you know I'm 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 more on the nut side, so I'm comfortable with this scenario. That's not you probably. Some uh, some people scratching their heads, going, "Really? You have a baby? She's gonna quit her job, which is the majority of your income, and you're gonna start a self-employed gig." Hmm. Um, <laughs> tell us about, I mean, come, you know, did you get any pushback from friends, family, anyone? Um. No, actually, honestly, not really. I mean, my wife was very supportive all along the way. Uh, and, you know, I don't think we told everyone, like, the nitty-gritty and, like, how much, you know, what are the details of our finances were. So to them, it was just what we were doing. And uh, so, no, I, you know, family and friends were, were very supportive. That's incredible. That's incredible, and that's rare. I mean, for the folks that are listening, I mean, that's a big issue that often is – paramount to that journey is when well one when you know if you're married and your spouse is not in support that's huge I mean that's a deal killer right. usually. absolutely but when those even your close friends and family who you know out of care and out of love and out of not really understanding a, a self-employed pursuit anyways you generally get pushback so the fact that you didn't with those pretty acute circumstances is right. incredible what a gift and, and as you said you surrounded yourself with people who were 
on this pursuit, and that's a big paradigm shift. Right. right. I, I think you know a big thing was too, Kevin. I didn't have like this career track that I was on. I didn't have a 401k. You know, I didn't. I I was kind of already kind of on. I was an employee. No, actually, I was an independent contractor at the music store. The way we had it arranged, but. Uh, you know, I didn't have this set job where we had this big mortgage, we had, you know, kids in school, we had all this sort of stuff, car payments. We lived pretty simply, and uh, I didn't have this big salary that I needed to replace. So, to me, you know, at the time, yeah, heck, I would have wanted more money, you know, in that job, but to me, that was the biggest blessing of all. Not We were sort of very... Uh, nimble at the time, I'll say, you know, so it was easy for us to kind of shift some things around and, and make it work. Well, which, as you know, man, that's a huge deal. I talk about that be, usually before I take on a personal client and say, okay, when we're, if you're looking at going after an idea or increasing a part-time business or whatever, what kind of nut are we trying to crack to make you go, you know, be able to be full-time? And when I hear, oh gosh, we need, you know, nine grand a month, and I've heard more than that, we need 12, that's difficult. When I hear somebody say, gosh, we can actually make it, uh, you know, it's tight, but we can make it on four grand or something, I, oh, that's that's a lot easier. My job right. just got a lot easier. I mean, this transition, uh, there's a lot more hope in this happening quickly, at least. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a big deal. Okay, so you said you had a one client, one yep. student, 150 bucks a month, which is pretty good. That was your start. So in that sense, my big question of okay, how did you make that first dollar? You obviously had done that. You've probably met. Well, you can tell us if you met somebody, met them through the music store and took them on. But then now at the point of okay, I'm going after this. We're committing to this. Then tell us about maybe that next dollar or that next student and then bringing yeah. those on to where you're actually generating income to support yourselves. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I had one or two students kind of on the side for a few years. So that never really felt like my own sort of self-employment business gig. So, uh, you know, my first thing, it wasn't even music lessons. Prior to thinking of starting a music store, I decided to try a little window washing <laughs> business on the side, and uh, that was kind of where I first like kind of put myself out there a little more. You know, I hit the streets one day. I had a bucket and a squeegee. I went into the center of town and I, I knocked door to door to businesses. I like went in, introduced myself. I had little business cards printed up, uh, and uh, I knocked door to door and I said, you know, hey, you know, I, I'm Michael Good. You know, I do window washing. Uh, does anyone wash your windows? And you know, I had my bucket and squeegee. I was terrified. I felt like everyone, like walking, everyone was looking out their windows, like wondering what the heck this guy is walking down the street with a bucket and a squeegee. It was, oh, it was. I sat in my car before I got out, uh, you know, probably for 15 minutes, trying to slick myself up uh, before, you know, before I actually did it. And then halfway through, one guy gave me a little bit of pushback. He's like, you know, he said, well, you know. It was a pretzel shop. I remember it. You know, it was a pretzel shop, and uh, he, I, he asked, "Well, how much would it be?" And I sort of, you know, glanced around and said, "You know, hey, it's going to be, you know, I forget what it was, forty bucks or something. You know, forty bucks. I can do it once a week, once every other week, whatever you, whatever you want." And he, you know, sort of, you know, sort of thought about it for a minute. No, that's too expensive. That's crazy. You know, that sort of response. And I was like, "Oh my goodness, I was crushed." And uh, he, you know, I was like, oh, well, you can hang on to my business card. Here it is if anything changes. And he's like, no, no, you take it. I, I don't want that. <laughs> and yeah. uh, so I don't know. I felt very vulnerable. Uh, I didn't make a dollar that day. I had expectations. I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to you know, make 500 bucks this first day out. Uh, didn't make a buck. But I did make that first dollar in window washing. Uh, I think it was like the next week I sort of, Decided not to go into the center of town. I went to like some strip malls and got a um, a Dunkin' Donuts shop. Actually, made forty bucks. They paid me forty bucks to wash the outside and the inside of the windows. That was really what felt like the first dollar in business. That's excellent. That's a that's it's it's just funny because you feel like I've been there and you feel like an idiot. I remember the first time I uh, tinted windows on a home. I went to a lady's home priced it out and gave her the price for the downstairs at like, you know, buck seventy five per square foot is what I'm doing it on, but I just gave her the overall price. And she said, Oh, well yes, let's do that. And my first thought was crap. She would have done a lot <laughs> I went upstairs 
and priced it at like two twenty five a square foot because I had just given her the overall number and she said yeah. that's great. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's great to hear uh, that you know if you're willing to be an idiot, it reminds me of that movie. We bought a we bought a zoo. We bought a zoo with. Mm. Uh, uh, what's the guy's name? I can't remember. Movie we bought a zoo. And it is the big point out of that, you know, twenty seconds of courage. Twenty seconds. It's all it takes. If you'll just do that, <laughs> you're gonna get the story. Well, just right then, give us, the, give me uh, how you then with the students. You know, you you'd had some on the side when you really first started going after that. Just how did you initially do that? Did you just literally word of mouth and start making phone calls? Did you put a website together? Did you put a flyer together? And when did you get that first? You know, kind of uh, start building that business and getting some 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 realistic dollars in. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, kind of all those things. I put up, up a basic WordPress website. Uh, looked terrible, but I got me a couple of clients and uh, did some flyers. Um, my wife was still working like one or two days at her job, so she they agreed to put up a flyer. It was at an orthodontic office. They put up a little flyer in there. I did Craigslist, you know, I put ads up on Craigslist for guitar lessons, and um, so kind of everything. And I gradually started getting students. Um, it was, I think, about five months after I quit my job and pursued it full time that I uh, made the first thousand bucks a month. Um, wow. The first thousand bucks period might have came like two or three months in when. My profit would have totaled a thousand bucks, but about five months into it, I was at that point making about a thousand bucks a month um, from the business, just from the business. And you know, from there, it, it it grew from there. Started doing some different things with marketing, some free classes and stuff like that, uh, which which um, helped grow it beyond that point. Well, and you're saying so five months into it, you're up to a thousand bucks a month, and saying now you said uh, you said earlier you're two and a half years into this. Yeah. And let off with 40 students, and you've had to bring on some other teachers. So give us a snapshot of where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. So two teachers. It's I, I still do a lot of teaching myself as well, but two other teachers that I work with, and uh, two great guys. You know, it's that's been one of the greatest things. I've really enjoyed working with other people, kind of building a team uh, with the business. So uh, they're two great guys that I really enjoy working with, and. Yeah, so that's what we're doing today. Private music lessons. We do, you know, a couple of recitals a year. Uh, what we do, just a little more about the business. We do uh, in-home lessons. So we're actually out there going to students' homes, doing lessons that way. And uh, you know, in terms of finances, uh, you know, it was really interesting. You know, after a few months after I quit, maybe it was around that thousand bucks a month mark. I remember driving by the train station. I used to take the train sometimes into Philly. Uh, that's where the, uh, the music shop was. You know, I would commute like an hour to, to work to this job at the music shop, and uh, I wasn't making a lot of money. But you know, I'd be gone all day and uh, wasn't bringing a lot back. And then it was a few months after I quit my job and did the teaching that I realized I would drive by the train station and I realized, like, wow, you know, here I would have been all day working down in Philadelphia, but now you know I'm going out and teaching for like two hours and making what I would have made. Uh, teaching all day or working all day at the other jobs. So suddenly my time, I realized, uh, was worth like three times what it was when I was working the shop. So, um, you know, so I'm, you know, I'm not making like tons and tons of money like maybe the next person is, but I'm making more than I ever have, uh, which is great. And uh, my time has, you know, I've been able to leverage it more like with other teachers and uh, so it's it's been it's been a lot of fun and it's been a lot of hard work for sure. My goodness, many days you know I feel like you know what the heck am I doing? It's ready to throw in the towel. You know, I probably had one of those days just last week to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Well, granted, I understand that though. Uh, I think people have that daily in the traditional job as you talked about, and I appreciate you pointing that out. I I see people who often don't really take into context the actual cost of their job. Where I live up here in the mountains, we're 15, 20 miles from Colorado Springs, and we got about half the community that commutes down every single day. And hmm. I talk to multiple people who have a you know quote good job, and they're bringing in thirty five thousand dollars a year or so, which is is not 
ton, but then they have that expense. The time, the commute of 45 minutes there, 45 minutes back, an hour there, hour back, the wear and tear on the car, the dealing with the weather, and the amount of time, and I'm thinking, dude, for the time that you're actually putting in, if yeah. you weight that then to how much you're making per hour, you could just about wait tables and, and stay in town and, and make just yeah. as much. Just as a culture, we don't really put those things in context, not to mention the stress and anxiety and the, and the things that go oh, along yeah. oh, often I know. with the Absolutely. job. We well, talked talk to mention you know, multiple times, being honest about this is hard work. I mean, as you have done this, as you have walked this out over these past two and a half years, what has been the primary, uh, you know, I, I call it the resistance. I think that's a Seth Godin term, the resistance. You know, what's been the primary struggle in you being self-employed and walking this out? Yeah, I think I think it really comes down to, to two things for me. One, one I realized more recently as I've been building more of a team around what I'm doing, bringing these other teachers on, and that, that first thing would be working solo. I do much better when I bounce ideas off other people. I get, you know, I don't know, I get, I don't know, I just discouraged and you know get sort of locked in one train of thought as I you know probably a lot of people do but for me I've noticed just recently past six months that I do really well when I can bounce ideas off other people and that's been great you know like I mentioned the other teachers I'm working with now being able to you know we have our, our, our team meetings and you know it's just running ideas by them and it's like hey you know, you know what do you think we should do here about these things and uh, that's been really great so that's been one of the tough things, you know, kind of being on, on your own. I know you talked about that some, Kevin. Um, so, you know, that's, that's, that's a, real, a real challenge for people being self-employed, absolutely. Uh, second thing I think that's been a real sort of resistance for me is, is comparing. Comparing against what other people are doing and falling into that comparison trap and saying, you know, well, it would be better, what I'm doing would be better if, you know, I was doing what they were doing or if I was doing you know, making more money, or if I was, you know, couldn't live here, or could, you know, all this stuff, sort of getting caught up in saying what I'm doing isn't as important, isn't as um, meaningful as the next as the next person. It's sort of uh, getting caught in that, and it's, you know, if you get caught in that, then you're, you're miserable, and uh, not only that, you're, you know, you're doing yourself a disservice because you're, you're discounting, you know, your own gifts and abilities, which everyone has, and you're doing your, you know, if you have clients, you're you're doing your clients a disservice too, because you're you're saying, yeah, oh, well, this doesn't really matter, you know, it'd be better if it was this way. Um, then you know you're not really giving the best service that you know that you can. Man, that's just a great great perspective. Thank you for sharing fully on on that that's uh that's a big deal well so on the same side so along with that so as you're dealing with working solo that that's difficult and yeah comparing yourself with other people and just the challenges of running a business and has been the main inspiration that has enabled you to keep going yeah, I think it's been a lot of um, you know a lot of books. I read a lot, listen to a lot of audio books in the car while I'm in the car, and I think it's also been just celebrating the little wins along the way. That's something I I don't do that well at. Um, but when you know when I do take time to to realize you know hey actually you know what I'm doing, uh, you know I did you know did sort of meet that little goal I had, and I did you know get X amount of clients this month. Uh, it's sort of again not discounting uh, what you're doing, but saying like, hey, you know, we're actually we're actually doing it here. This is this is for real, uh, and just kind of acknowledging that. Um, that's been a, a big inspiration. And then thirdly, just you know, getting out there and trying things. Because again, if I get stuck sort of by myself in my office, uh, just sort of going at it on my own with my head down. Uh, Nothing. It's it's bad bad news for everyone. <laughs> so, it's getting out there and trying things. And you know, whether it's a new marketing marketing idea, whether it's a new, I don't know. You know, a new thing that I'm going to try with some of my students, a new teaching, I don't know, teaching approach, whatever it might be. That can be just really refreshing and bring new inspiration. I found. Well, and I'm t I'm literally sitting here taking show notes, and when you wrote that about uh, what I wrote down, tell me if this is correct, is the personal fulfillment of achievement of looking back and going, hey, we're actually doing it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, 
that that's been huge because you know you start out slow uh, and it's it's a struggle and it's like ah uh, you know okay I'm doing this full time I don't have a job but like I'm not making much money here at the beginning like we're 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 hurting here and so it never really feels like you can fully be like you know hey this is great you know we're we're self employed or we're in business but um, you know, you start to get a little more traction, and things start to move along. And if you're not careful, you get sort of stuck in that mentality of like, uh, "We're struggling here," and like, "Well, you know, we're still trying to figure it out." And you know, I think you're always trying to figure it out, but um, but it's sort of like acknowledging it and sort of having maybe these benchmarks uh, where you can be like, take a minute and be like, "Like, no, like this is for real. Like, we're actually doing it." You know, I'm not going to look at the guy next, you know, the next guy over and saying, you know, like, well, if only I could do that, or when I get to this point, then, you know, then I can really relax, or then I can fully enjoy what I'm doing, or acknowledge, like, hey, this is for real. Um, but no, like, so to say, like, this is for real now. Like, that's, you know, that's let's do this. That's excellent. Well, so that question, this is this is very can be very similar, and it can. Uh, you may have already run over it, but I'll ask it in a different way as well. When you look back on two and a half years, and here you are today, is there a primary reward that you're just ah, just grateful for? Yeah, I, you know, great question. I, I think there are a couple of things. I mean, the obvious ones. I have more time with my family, uh, which is great. I'm, you know, work from home half the day. But also, it's like things like just I don't know, growing, and I think for me, it's a lot of maturing too, and realizing you know, that you know, hey, this is this is my life here today, every single day, and it's you know, if I want to do something, I'm gonna have to get up and and do it. So it's just a lot of like the personal growth stuff, you know, when you're on your own, your junk, uh, you know, comes up, and uh, you got to work through it and grow through it, and uh, so that's a big one, you know. I mentioned flexibility. That's been a lot of fun. I've really been enjoying that. Just time, whether it's time with family, whether it's deciding like, hey, I need to get out this morning. It's a nice day. I'm gonna go, you know, I'm gonna go, you know, do some emails from Starbucks this morning, or, or you know, I'm gonna, I need to run some errands for the business. It can be the middle of the day, and you know, I can be out there running a couple errands. I'm not going into the office nine to five. But, you know, I love that. It's out there. It's different every day, and I can get out there and try new things. That's been that's been a big reward for me. And that is a great testimony, and just a great confirmation or, or thread of repeating in a sense. I just my last interview was with Brian Griffith with Anthology Gearwear, and that's what he talked about with this. Is he said, I it has been very very he's had some big challenges with this but he says I am just a better man for it I have matured uh, and so for you to say that this, the show notes are going to be similar to that is a great testimony for folks to hear so thank you well what's next so now here you are two and a half years 40 students two teachers uh, what's next is it just you know continued growth along the the avenue you've been on is there something anything new you're looking at tell us about that yeah, sure. Well, you know, I think there's there's always something uh, always something new. But right now, it's it's I want to transition into more where I am uh, focusing more on growth for the business and leading a team with the business. So stepping back a little bit from teaching myself and transition to more into growing the business. You know, I've, you know, really discovered that, you know, hey, you know, this sort of, some of this marketing stuff is a lot of fun to get out there and try, or, or running a team thing is a lot of fun. I really enjoy that. I feel like, you know, I, you know, there's, I, I'm good at it, too. And, um, so that's, that's fun. Also, uh, focusing maybe more on doing some things with the, the business where I do some more event type stuff. We do recitals, but maybe doing a little more with that. You know, I, I love running those, planning those, and uh, making them a special occasion where everyone, it's, it's meaningful, memorable, and uh, making it run really smoothly and everything. So it's kind of maybe working a little more behind the scenes a little more and doing some of that stuff. Okay, which is, man, that's an interesting or worthy perspective to bring up because when we go after a business, this goes back to Michael Gerber with the E-Myth, which was sure. 
20 years ago or more, 25 years ago, and he talks about so often people are doing something. You know, you got a plumber, he's doing the plumbing and uh, working for somebody and says, gosh, I could do this on my own, you know, make more make right. more income. And he goes after it and does that and then realizes, wait, now I've got to learn how to run a business. And that was never really a thought. What I hear you sharing, though, it, which could be relevant for you to say, gosh, if I just absolutely passionate, love teaching music and you want to do that and you don't want to go over here and do these other stuff, other things. But what I'm hearing from you is the, the marketing and the, in essence, the managing, you know, the, having the team members is are things, and you said they're fun and I am good at, and you want to step back and do that. And that's, I just, that's not going to be everybody. And so I want folks to hear that you may not be that. And you may, you could be where Michael is saying, no, I really like the teaching and I'm, I need help with the marketing. I need help with the managing. That's not where I am uh, good at, and that's okay too. So I want you to hear that's okay. You know, you're hearing Michael testify that he, he enjoys the business. Did I get that right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, so pointing back to that sort of growth and maturity, it's, it's, it's being on your own. You learn more about yourself and what you enjoy doing. So that's really been a kind of a revelation since I since I started. Um. That's yeah. So that big deal there. Thanks for pointing that out and just bringing that out. And I'll have to say because I've been, you know, even looking at my own business, the managing part, um, I don't enjoy and I suck at it. So uh, there you go. <laughs> figure out where our strengths are yeah. in our business aspect. Hey, well, I guess um, we should team up, Kevin. Uh, you, probably. You, uh, probably. You what, you're you're great at like inspiring and like you know bring people I don't know people like on the show you know, it's, this is stuff like this which I found so encouraging that's why what, what I think what you're doing is so great and so important for people because it makes it seem real you know, it's a suddenly uh, we need someone out there who is telling us like you know, more of a, telling us that we can do it and uh, you know here are some resources this is this is going to help you along the way yeah yeah well thank you thank you for that and yeah I do I love doing I could do this all day all day long um, well man uh, thank you just for sharing all of this sharing from your heart so as we have people who are listening who are at different stages. Some are just in a job that they don't like or that they know is gonna is it gonna end or they just desperately want to end. They're they're dreaming of an idea, something to go after. Some people have an idea they desperately want to bring to fruition. Some are self employed, fledgling, just beginning something, and some folks are doing it full time. So you've got this group of people out here that are listening to this. What is an encouraging word you would offer to them? Yeah, I think, I think you know some things that were that meant a lot to me when I started believing that it wasn't just a high stream. I pointed back to that earlier, and to think that I could actually do it too, that was big for me. Uh, so I would say, you know, it's not just a pipe dream. Don't fall into that comparison trap and saying, hey, well, you know, look at Michael, look at Kevin, look at the next guy, you know, look at all these people who are doing all these great things. They're already doing it full time, and I'm still in my job. You know, if, if, well, if, you know, if I didn't make all this money or if I didn't have this big mortgage like Michael didn't have, you know, then I could do it. Like, no, you, you have to do, you have to deal with your story, right? So maybe you have that, but you can't say, if, if I had someone else in the community, then I could do it. So don't fall into the comparison trap. You know, you can do it. Anyone else can do it. It's, it's, you know, it's, just, it's hard work. It's learning and growing. Um, putting yourself out there. Yeah, that's, that's a big deal. I hear that. I've heard that as a consistent thread. Don't fall into the comparison trap. That is so difficult, just dealing with the status quo, the, the, the flow of our culture, uh, the people around you, and it does take some, I, I don't know, You what would you, it takes some, it takes some faith, and just, you said that multiple times, just step out. That feels like a, another thread of your message. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, hope and prayer, and we're how long we Man, thank you. That should be the title of this. Just step out. Thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you so much for the, your time for sharing this. I'm so stoked about your your business. I know you've got other ventures that you are doing, um, but thank you. This will this will testify and empower a lot of people. Help give them 
permission to go and step out as you have done. So, brother, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to do a little outro music. Hang with me just a second. All right, great. <laughs> All right. I'm free.